Hi, my name is Becca Pachotto. I'm an archaeologist in residence at American University here in Washington, D.C. And when I'm not in D.C., I have one of the best commutes to work ever. I get to crawl and climb and scramble through the Rising Star Cave to excavate fossils of a not-so-ancient human relative that was discovered in 2013. But since this video series is about bioanthropology and the public, there's something you should know about me. I am not a bioanthropologist. I'm an anthropologist, yes, but my academic training is in archaeology and not in the field of bioanthropology. I'm part of a team of more than 100 scientists with all different specialties, everything from bioanthropology and archaeology to ge geology and different parts of technology, that are all working together to try to understand fossils of Homo naledi and the cave in which they were found. Back in 2013, two South African cavers, Rick Hunter and Stephen Tucker, discovered fossils in 30 meters underground in the Rising Star Cave system in a really remote chamber. Rising Star Cave is in the Cradle of Humankind World Heritage Site, just outside Johannesburg, South Africa. And with more than 2,000 fossil specimens recovered from two separate chambers in the cave, representing more than 17 individuals, and dating to only 236 to 335,000 years ago, Rising Star has become one of the richest fossil hominid sites, and in my mind, one of the most exciting fossil hominid sites in Africa. But before we knew all that, before any of us had any idea what we were getting ourselves into with this project, Rising Star made its debut on social media with this ad posted by Lee Berger. The ad was asking for people who were willing and able to excavate fossils on the wrong side of some really tight squeezes in this cave. The post was shared through Bioanthropology News Facebook group and through other social networks where a friend of mine saw it and sent it on to me. Now, back then I had just finished my MA and I was focusing on historical archaeology. I was pretty far outside what you might call the mainstream of bio or paleoanthropology. But I had this unusual combination of excavation skills and technical skills and, yes, physical characteristics. I can squeeze through an 18 centimeter gap that Rising Star needed. So here already, before we've even found any fossils, before any excavation has happened, before really any science is being done, already social media is helping us build connections and build a stronger network. Throughout the month-long 2013 Rising Star expedition, while some of us were busy underground excavating, our colleagues on the surface, people like Lee Berger from the University of Vatterstrand, John Hawks from University of Wisconsin in Madison, and Andrew Howley from National Geographic, they were busy on the surface tweeting and making Facebook posts and producing blogs and, and producing videos, all telling the story of what we were doing underground. This is part of an almost paradigm shift for, for field science where researchers are, are willing and are taking the risk to share our process, what we're doing in real time before we even have any idea what we're going to find before we know what our results are going to be. When we went back to Rising Star in September of this year, both chambers of the cave, the Dinaledi chamber where the original Homo Naledi fossils were found and the Lissetti chamber where more remains of Naledi were found, both chambers were equipped with Wi-Fi. That let us, as excavators, make our own posts to tweet, to post on Facebook, to engage with students in classrooms all over the world, thanks to Joe Grabowski's National Geographic Explorer classroom, Skype, and Google Hangout. We were able to talk to people from the cave, which, you know, that's pretty cool, even if the science you're doing is totally awesome, too. And those archived National Geographic Explorer classroom videos are available on YouTube, and they've been viewed 3,500 times in the last two and a half months. That's a lot of connections and a lot of people seeing what we're doing who might not otherwise have access to science in real time. Some of the kids and, and teachers who tuned in to watch us live from the cave got to see fossils that were discovered while we were online with them. These kids were seeing fossils on screen at the same time as Lee Berger and John Hawks were seeing them for the first time on screen. Talk about social media bringing you to the front row of, of human origins, of the study of human origins. John Hawks points out that using this use of social media, sharing our excavation in real time, shifts the power dynamic, giving, us, giving voice to the scientists and a direct line to the public. For example, the Arc, the narrative arc of the 2015 Nova National Geographic documentary, Dawn of Humanity, that narrative was practically written by the tweet, tweets and Facebook posts produced by the science team during the excavation itself. And 
the story was already written and the producers of that film really did need to follow our story as opposed to one that they thought they understood. I see social media in Rising Star and Homo Naledi shifting the power dynamic in a second exciting way. Many of these tweets and posts and videos go on to have a life of their own outside of the cave. During the 2013 expedition, the inimitable John Mead at Evo Explorer, that's this guy, created a series of, of video Twitter play-by-plays for his middle school science classroom. Those videos have since been viewed more than 84,000 times in 20 countries. And in 2015, John came back and interviewed many of our excavators and explorers from the team and his, his video interviews with us on his blog have been viewed 125,000 times in countries from Hong Kong to Hungary, from South Africa to Sweden. And this is really great outreach for our project and for John as an educator. It's not just our original posts on social media that build connections between us, our research, and the public. It's also the cascade of networks that are built through those connections as they multiply. And it's not just in the educational realm. Homo Naledi has, has had this, this whole other life outside of the classroom and outside of the cave. Rising Star and Homo Naledi have appeared in, in memes, like the Tupperware Party meme, and it's been in political cartoons, in comics as a long-lost relative, in editorial cartoons as a, as a sports fan, and, and even as a political candidate for two different countries. And often those reference the, the, that it has the brain the size of an orange. My underground astronaut colleagues and I have lost track of the number of out of the blue Twitter and Facebook connections that we've made with teachers and with students and with community groups. We've beamed ourselves into classrooms all over the world, been able to talk to people, answer student questions, um, and, and really engage with people using social media, whether it's on a tweet or responding to posts or whether it's face to face, so to speak, through a video screen. One group of students contacted Hannah Morris um, and asked if we would lip sync on the video for their class project. They'd written Homo Naledi, lyric, Homo Naledi themed lyrics to the song Shut Up and, and Let Me Dance. With lyrics like, are you an Australopith or, or in the genus Homo? How could we say no? Of course we did. That was really fun. And Lindsay Hunter was contacted or found out through social media that a little girl she'd never met had dressed up for her as Halloween. I'm not saying all this to show how cool, to say how cool we are. Rather, I'm trying to give an example, give some examples of how for us, for Rising Star and for Homo Naledi, social media gives people an opportunity to be excited about these fossils, about science and about human origins right alongside us. When we share our stories of science, discovery and exploration, we're creating space for kids and adults, too, to weave these things into their story as well. Now, sometimes social media has let Homo Naledi go off on adventures all its own. Sometimes Homo Naledi's social, social media trajectory has gone way outside of our core networks, had a grand old time by itself, and then filtered back to us through other connections. Take, for example, the video uh, from a South African music festival called Opikopi, where this band right here, with a death metal name, Satanic Dacha Orgy, sings a cheerful, happy, pop punk fusion song about Homo Naledi. It's not science, it's not bioanthropology, strictly speaking. But I seriously doubt that many fossil hominids would show up at music festivals if it weren't for social media. We take a big risk when we decide to put our work out on social media. When we put hashtag Homo Naledi, when we say hashtag Rising Star Expedition, which is too long for a practical hashtag. When we say hashtag Dinaledi Chamber, hashtag Lissetti Chamber. When we add all that stuff to our tweets and our Facebook posts and our blogs and our videos, we take a risk. Yes, we're connecting with other scientists. We're connecting with experts in our field. We're building connections that we can ask people who, who might have answers to what we're finding or to, to troubles we run into during the excavations. We're also connecting with students and, and with the public and with people who might not even think that they have an interest in a South African cave or, or hominid fossils or any of these things. We take a risk when we do this, but the connections that we build with students, the, the opportunity that we give people to ask us questions as things are happening and ask us questions in person without having to wait for it to show up in a journal article or in a textbook somewhere, 
those connections are really important. And so I hope that, that our experiences with Homo Naledi and with Rising Star and all the social media outreach that we've done and that we're continuing to do um, is, gives, you, gives you a hand and, and is an invitation to you to, to try these things with, the, with your projects and with your research.